Hi, it's Victoria Napolitano. Thank you for joining Aaron and I here at the lounge. Let's get started. Hey, Aaron, Victoria here in the lounge. How are you today? I'm great. How are you, Victoria? I'm ready for a hot discussion on dating. Oh, yeah, I am too. Let's do this. <laughs> so do you want to start off with, uh, let, let's just start off with you being a gentleman. I've heard a lot about you. I've been around you as well. I love your manners and your gentleman-like you. qualities. Thank you. Well, uh, that it, it, you know, it's a funny thing to bring up, especially today, and like where where it comes from, and where is a gentleman gone, right? Where 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 is that person kind of gone, and and where does it start from? And um, you know, I, it's like I said, I was raised by two wonderful parents, um, married of fifty years three boys. And, you know, my dad taught all his boys from the very beginning that it's please and thank yous waiting to, to be asked a question and having great manners, holding doors. And beyond that, it goes beyond just dating. It goes to the point of going into a grocery store and, and there's an elderly person coming up and holding the door for them or a small child or a mother with a baby, something nice for them all kind of gets incumbent of being a good gentleman. You don't see that as much anymore. Maybe I don't see it. Maybe women aren't seeing it. What do you think? Are you seeing less of, of, of men being gentlemen these days? I think you could tell by age, and I hate to say it, but if you see someone generally over 40, they're going to have manners. And the men under 40, again, I'm not judging, but right. a lot less likely. And for instance, if a woman drops something on the ground, anyone over 40 generally will automatically bend over to pick it up or help Absolutely. her. I would agree. But I, someone I think, under 40 might look at it and go, okay, well, again, did the girls ask for this saying we want to be equal? That's where I don't understand where the uh, disconnect comes. I don't know. I, I, again, it's, it's, I'm old fashioned. When I'm going on a date and when I've been on dates, it's about that first impressions. And I think if you're not going to be a gentleman and you want to impress somebody that you really, really like or care about, it's about getting out of the car waiting for them to come up to the vehicle, not sitting in the vehicle on your phone, checking your messages and trying to get other stuff done that everybody else these days are involved in because that phone just sucks you in, right? And, That's tacky. And, and even going up to the front door. But I think people have gotten nervous about that. I Even to the today, right? Maybe they don't want you to come to the front door. Maybe that's creepy. Some some women maybe think, you know, younger generation, maybe like, oh my God, he came to my door and rang the doorbell. You know, who does that anymore, right? Because now everybody kind of pulls up and, hey, I'm here. Are you going to come out? And it's so built in their heads that maybe, I think guys are starting to do that on dates. That's um, so sad. Because... And, go ahead. No, no, go I didn't mean to cut you. Go ahead. No, I, I, I think, you know, again kind of an older older guy you know perspective i think that if younger guys are listening and you really want to impress a young lady get out of your car you know if, whether you wait for her as she comes out at, at the door or ring the doorbell or waiting at the vehicle so you can open the door for her let her get in take your time doing those things right away that's the first impression they're going to have of you that that's where it starts right there from the very first moment and they're going to remember that and I know it's so out of date, but it's a thing about manners. Was it the movie with Stallone or who Who was it that remember the young boy was in the passenger seat and they said, you'll know a good woman is if you let her in the car and she unlocks your door before you get over to the next side? Yeah, I, I know. I, I've, I'm not sure if it's Stallone or not, but I remember hearing about that. And that says a lot. And mm -hmm. Not many, but I've I've had a couple that have done that, and it just shows women can have those manners too. But and even if it's just a simple thank you, mm -hmm. and I think I, from the guy's perspective, if you're being a gentleman, you're holding the doors. If a female maybe is not saying thank you or oh that was so nice of you, or they're just expecting it, and not saying anything, I think it works kind of both ways a little bit too. True, because if you know you're trying to do all these nice things and. They don't need to do them back, but if it's just a simple, oh my gosh, thank you, or you know, you didn't have to do that, that's some of that recognition. And that's kind of how you start that bond of whether you're not like, wow, they maybe kind of like you a little bit, you're kind of impressing them, you're kind of getting those feelings, especially like on a first date, mm -hmm. that there's something there. 
but that's got to be continuous through through like an evening like that on a first date, right? It's all the way to the restaurant or if you're going to get coffee or whatever your date may be to holding the door when you go inside an establishment, pulling their chair out, you know, letting them order first, letting them go to the bathroom first, you know, making sure that you're making them your priority. And there's I think so it has many... to be natural, though. I it feel does. like if you don't do it all the time, it's going to fall flat. And I'm going to I'll be in defense of the guys now. With so many girls offended on everything. Oh, I'm offended. That's so rude. Don't open a door for me. I can open my own door. Don't know if men are getting scared to do things because they don't want to offend a girl. What's the difference? Or is a girl so independent, the guy just doesn't do it anymore? What do you think happened between the two sexes? I, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's, you know, women are very, very independent. and But at the same time, I really think it's how you're brought up as as a man um, and, and what kind of background you had. And, and, and whether you're 22 years old or you're 50 years old or anything in between and beyond, I think that needs to stay constant, you know, as the kind of character or person you Agreed. are. Agreed. And if a gal is offended by you opening the door or, you know, pulling a chair out for them or holding their jacket, doing that extra thing, well, then no, thank you. You know, I, 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 for me, I think that tells a little bit about somebody that that, that they're not appreciative to that. And I, I'm all about a, a, a strong woman and a very independent woman, but I think that they want to be treated like a lady too. And I agree with you. Maybe that's the old fashioned inside of me. A lost, I don't know if you would call it an art, but just a lost characteristic in guys these days. Cause so many people, I, I can't tell you, if you go sit down in a restaurant and you look around, how many people are on their phones? You know, or their that's phones so on the table. That's rude. Just or go your home at that table. point. Just go or the home. phone's on the table. I mean, that's mm -hmm. a huge red flag too. Just the phone being on a table, um, I think, is is tough. People, that separation anxiety is is when you asked me earlier what's what's happening. I think a little bit has to do with technology and prioritizing. It's an addiction, I think, because sometimes when they're looking at the phone, what are you looking at? Are you really is it Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat or? TikTok, right. that important, more important than the person across from you. I heard a man, and tell me if you feel the same. He said, sure. I open a door for a woman or I'll do things for a woman. It's not because I think she's weak. It's the right thing to do as a man. Absolutely. That's a, that's a great quote. I, I think kind of a man's man should be doing that. And you're setting an example, not only for the gal, but for her friends and family, if you ever meet them to see what kind of gentleman you are, all the way to when you have kids, you know, you need to set that example, especially so with, with men that have daughters to, you know, you're going to be the first guy in their life and you need to set the tone. You need to set the example of what kind of gentleman do you want to be with your daughter? That's important. I mean, it's just like I said, being like, and when you brought this topic up to me, you know, talking about this today, that gentleman idea is universal in all aspects and all relationships of, of every day. And I'll tell you, it's it's even just going to get a cup of coffee. You know, you see somebody walking in, an elderly lady, and some guy just buzzes right past her. That's just so rude. And people see that. People are very aware that when you see something like that, it's just we're getting on an airplane, and you know. Someone trying to, even if it's an older gentleman and he's having a hard time putting his bag up, it doesn't always have to be a lady, right? True. Hey, help them out. Give them an extra hand. You'll see that it's, there's a feel good. I'm sure that most people on that airplane are looking and be like, gosh, you know what? I think other, I felt bad sometimes because I didn't get there quick enough because I see somebody helping. I'm like, God, mm -hmm. I should have done that, right? Right. Or I should have got there quicker. You'll but doing be examples like that will make them think. So next yeah. time someone that didn't do anything, they'll it's say, you know what? Effect. I remember seeing that I should. And I feel like it's such a division these days being a, a generation X I am is okay. you'll have women that will settle for guys that treat them terribly, but then they get on and talk about how bad guys are. And I think there's so many good guys. Why don't you pick the good guy? But you're picking men that do everything you don't like. When I hear people online, oh, I can't believe it. He's going out with a different girl or he's texting women. Why are you with him? I don't understand why you're with him. It's not going to get better. Why is that? 
Victoria, I don't, why, I don't why, understand. Why do like you that? drop your standards and and you'll just put up with whatever. Or I've heard girls just put up with mean things by guys, and it's sad because there's so many. I know so many great guys out there, including you, that. Oh, you don't have to have a bad guy. Not all the bad, all the guys are bad. So don't, I don't like how they summarize all men as being jerks. Oh, they're all jerks. Oh, they all cheat on you. Well, the ones you're around. <laughs> yeah. yeah it, because it, it, you're, it, you have no really, self-esteem. It really comes down to what, you know, what women are and men are looking for, you know, in a relationship and what you'll put up with or what they'll put up with. Absolutely. Right. So let's let's put let's do a scenario now. Let's do it. Okay. So you meet a girl online and everything's going great. You've been talking to her, let's just say a few weeks. And you pick her up and you walk to her door. What would be the perfect date from then? You pick her up at the door and you have a surprise date for her. What would it be? Well, if it, if this was the is this the first day? Is this the first time her and I are going out? Yeah, that's a good question. I think you know it's got to be something you know maybe a little bit earlier in the day. You know you want to make the gal feel comfortable, right? You know you've talked online, you've established this, or I'm sorry, whether you talked online or on the phone, you you've kind of established a rapport. You want to make them feel comfortable. You know, there's all these stories of like, man, I met this guy or gal online and my goodness, they were a creep. And, you know, you don't, you never know who's behind that. So you want to make them feel comfortable. So you want to do a little bit of your homework and plan something out. And for me, if it, if it has to do something with food or dinner, definitely would maybe take them out to a, a restaurant that would be something like that's kind of kind of an open area, public, you know, people, you know, we're around other people. It's not like secluded somewhere. Um, just a nice, nice open patio where we could talk and not too loud. But again, I'm going to go do my homework and make sure that this place is going to be that kind of spot. And, and hopefully that the gal would appreciate that. And then maybe something nice, like if you time it right, where it maybe like there's like a sunset or you can go for a little walk by the restaurant. Maybe it's on a beachfront or it's by a, a park or something like that, where the gal feels comfortable being around you and you're not just going to be like hey let's let's go to a movie where we can't come do a conversation or let's you know go to a really loud bar or a club you know you can't really get to know that person i think the very first date and that kind of impression for me would be a very casual nice dinner um somewhere with a nice patio and nice a nice walk afterwards and see where the date goes um now would you I, try to make a move i don't know about that you know i don't be fake yeah. tell the truth <laughs> That you, you know what? It, it really depends. I, I would be completely comfortable maybe seeing how dinner goes first, right? And again, I mean, we talked about this earlier. Mm -hmm. From the second you get out of that car, you're going to get that chemistry and feel how you guys are vibing in the vehicle. Are you guys talking? Is she quiet? Is she on her phone? Maybe that's an indication that she's a little too nervous. Kind of trying to gauge how, she's, how she feels about me and vice versa by all those little things that she's doing and that I'm doing. And I would hold her hand if we were going to, if I ask, cause that, that to me is maybe you don't tell her about the walk. I wouldn't tell her about that. I want to make her feel comfortable. I don't want to say, Hey, guess what? We're going to do X, Y, and Z all night long. And she's overwhelmed. I want to be like, let's go have oh, dinner. Right. But knowing in my mind, Hey, I'm going to ask her for a coffee or a dessert somewhere else um, or a walk, because I think that's really important because if you're having a great time and you're sitting there talking and say, Hey, I've had a wonderful evening. I'd love to take you for coffee or, or a dessert, you know, and there's a great place down here, which hopefully the guy has already kind of, you know, done his homework and, and known where these places are and, or go for a walk. And if the gal engages in that and goes, absolutely. I'd love that. Then you know that, Hey, this is going well. They really, you know, they're not saying, oh, I got to get home. I got to get up early. And so you think you can feel during dinner, what if she wants to go further in the sense of taking a walk or if she wants to go home? You think yeah, you can... I, I, I think so. I mean, mm -hmm. is she going, you know, if she disappeared for 20 minutes because she's in the bathroom, try to talk to her friend being like, I got to get out of this situation. Vice versa for a guy too, right? It could go either way. Mm -hmm. But if you both are engaged and you both feel a little bit of that chemistry, going to that next step, maybe taking a walk, I, I would, for me, the holding the hand thing, again, I'm old fashioned. I think that's like, 
I think that's better than a kiss sometimes, uh, you know, especially, I mean, I think we've all been there. We've all fell in love the first time. We've all felt that first connection. But when you hold someone's hand for the first time, that's, that's there's romantic a connect- to that's me. A, that's romantic to me, mm-hmm. you know, and for a guy. It gives a person the room to just to say, if you kissed her first, she may be taken aback. It's not that, that she didn't want to kiss you, but sure. it might be too much. But if you right. take her hand, that shows you're attracted to her. So she won't be shocked if you go to kiss her later. Sure. And and it's got to be, it's just got to happen naturally. Mm-hmm. You know, you just don't want to be just grabbing her hand. You know, there's got to <laughs> just kind of be like, you're close. And, you know, and the other thing is, how how does that go too? Like, are you, I mean, are you guys holding hands for a while? Does she pull away? Do you pull away? You know, those are all little feelers that you can do to make her feel comfortable as opposed to just like, I'm just going to go in and give her a big kiss or just like this kind of, you know, you know, a hug too quick or something like that. You want to make them feel comfortable. Cause again, talking about online, right. You met this person online. You don't know a whole lot about them, you know, see how that goes. You know, okay, I well, think... I'm going to play the devil's advocate now. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So you had a great dinner. Everything's smooth. It feels great. You go for a walk and you're all right. Well, it's around nine or whatever time it is. You sure. take her home. And she invites you in. What do you do? That's tough. You know, it, it's it's easy for me to say, you know, no, I'm not going to go in. But if if I did, you know, I I got to know what the intentions are. I I think, you know, I and don't I, be I, fake. You better not, not give me a fake, fake answer. No, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be fake. I think it comes from how from a perspective of I'm older now, right? And maybe the younger me would be like, oh, okay, love, you know, like let's let's see where this night goes you know, speaking from a younger age, but if I'm now older in life and you really, you know, everyone's busy and you, this is, you know, taking time out of your day to, you met somebody, you spent the time talking to them. I don't want to ruin any of that. Mm -hmm. I think now I'm going to, I'm going to pull back a little bit more and be a little bit more reserved in the sense that this person is really special. I want to be a little bit more of a gentleman. I want to be like, have a wonderful night. And I may go in. Probably wouldn't go in. I mean, again, you have to gauge the situation, but you're, you almost sound like you wouldn't go in. I'm, t- I'm timid about it a little bit mm-hmm. now. Um, it really, it depends on how the night went and the expectations. I think there is something to be said about sleeping with somebody the first night. I don't right. think it's very successful for a lot of couples. Again, it's a, maybe a generational thing when you're in your twenties and you're out partying, you're having fun. I get it. We've all been there guys and gals, right? Mm-hmm. Let's be honest. But as you get a little bit older and now you're looking for that relationship, whether it's marriage or boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever you guys both want, and you've had those experiences, now you don't, you want to take that experience and not ruin that. And and, and I think there's something to be said about that. That builds up a little bit of that, you know, desire and that excitement to see them again. You just hit it on the head, desire. Yeah. Because if you get something too quick, I feel like it's gone. Not that it can't be better. It just seems like it's gone because I've known different types of women and I believe everyone should just live their life the way they like it. Of course, as long as they're not hurting someone. But what would you do if you you're walking in the park and this girl is wild? You don't know she's wild until you're in the park and then she just wants to have sex in public or something. What would you do? (laughs) No, that I know that's really blatant, but I just. (laughs) <laughs> no, I, I, I'm going to say no. I mean, because in my mind, I'm thinking, OK, this is probably what, you, you know, this person does on a, on a weekly basis. And that just, you know, that that and be stuck in my head and be like, um, I'm good right now. I'm good. Uh, so you could clearly understand, hey, those were her intentions. And I, and look, that's OK for her. That That's what she wants. That's mm-hmm. that's great. And you know what? Maybe there are some guys that want that, too. There you mm-hmm. go. Hey, more power to them. But it really comes down to what what do they both want? And maybe you hopefully would know that having those conversations prior. But I, I'm walking away from that one. Uh, I mean, really? I would be polite. Tell the truth. I, I, no, I'm being honest. <laughs> I'd be polite. I'd be gentleman about it. I'm going to probably step away from that one. <laughs> I like the way you say that. Because there's two. And, and you're going to have to answer this as a guy. I'm wondering. Sure. There's two types of girls. So you you can have the girl that's uh, looking for a relationship, like you're saying. And so she wouldn't do that. But then there's a girl, she could be wild, but she also could be a relationship later. That's just the way she is personality-wise. That's true. No, that, that's absolutely true. I mean, look, let me flip it on you a little bit. Let me let me ask you this. Let's say 
you know, you're not in some park and let's say you're in Hawaii. It's a romantic, tropical destination place and people fall in love and it's romantic and it's just the it's sunset. And then it's different, right? And let's say you yeah, meet some gal that night and then you go out on the beach and things happen. See, and I think it depends on that too, right? So atmosphere, Harvard, is that what you're atmosphere. saying? Is that atmosphere? Yeah, it really depends. I would shy away from it a little bit if it's something, it depends what is the guy and gal's end game here. Is it just, mm -hmm. I just want a one night stand because I just went through a divorce and, oh, I see. you know, or in the guy, he's just like, you know what, you know, same thing, then more power to him. But mm -hmm. I think from a, from the gentleman's aspect and from a, and from a female, you know, you, you could tell me how that worked too, is that if they just really are looking for someone special, then I don't think that happens. You know, I'm not saying that that wouldn't happen because let's say you go on a couple dates and things are great. And then that does happen. Well, that's mm -hmm. amazing. That's great. That's sexy. That's, that's, that's romantic. Mm -hmm. But first date, you know, something like that. I think that kind of shows you what the guy and gal are both kind of looking for. And and maybe so that's, that's a what whole they are. different relationship. That could be what is that friends with benefits they say? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But so you there's... know what'd be disappointing is you do that and you really like her. Let's just say the second date, maybe. Okay. You really like her and you're thinking in the back of your mind, this is a girl I could date. And then she may have a different idea, thinking, he's so nice. I I'd love to just sleep with him. I'm not ready to settle down, but he's so nice. How do you make sure you don't miss signals? That's the, I think, Victoria, men have been trying to answer that question about <laughs> figuring out women for thousands of years here. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, it, I think it works both ways, but they're probably, you know, let me ask you, are there some women that I think you kind of hit it right there is that he's such a nice guy and, you know, maybe it's not going to work, but she wants to have sex and he obviously really likes her. You know, and then someone ends up getting their heart broken, probably the guy a little bit, because now he's thinking, wow, she, she likes me. You know, we slept together. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, you know, that's that's part of dating a little bit, too. Um, well, I, just being honest from a girl stand. Again, I've known so many women, so many models, actresses, normal girls, all kinds of girls. There's the guy that you sleep with because you feel safe with him, mm -hmm. but he may not necessarily be the guy you want to date. But you know that guy wouldn't hurt you. You know he doesn't have STDs. You know he <laughs> won't go kill you because he's not right. a murderer. So there's all these things that can make a girl do that in the first or second date only because he made her feel safe. Yeah. And and I think maybe, you know, for the guy and for the gal, and, and if people are listening to this, honesty is the best policy, right? I mean, I mm -hmm. think at some point, you have to have those conversations. And I think sometimes people are afraid to have them and just be open. I mean, more likely one of the other two people may be more head over heels for the other person. And a lot of times that happens in the beginning. So they got to just be a little bit honest. But well, girls are still judged. So let's just say, let's just say you, you see sure. her, she's gorgeous. You think she's sexy and she turns you on and you're, you're open to doing something that night. Let's just say it's a second date. Okay. For a girl, she could feel the same way, that exact same way, but you may look at her differently because she wants to, maybe it's just something about your chemistry or about your body or about your behavior that she may have never done that before. Yeah. No, so I so mean... she, you let her, she let her hair down because there's something about you, but girls are still just. Agreed. No, I, I would agree to that. And I think it's. It, she just tough. have to hold tight and just go, I need to go on a few more dates, then attack them. <laughs> maybe, maybe, but in timings and timings, everything, if you, if, if the gal feels really comfortable with the guy, you know, I think if, if a, if a girl wants to sleep right away with somebody, I think as a guy, you may want to be a little hesitant about that because we're, we're all met, you know, the guys that are listening, like, Hey, they, they want to be guys, right? Hey man, mm -hmm. you know, like guys. I hooked up with this gal and she was great. It was a great date, but you know, the next morning comes, right. And you know, where's that desire gone that you and I talked about earlier, you know, yeah. where's that buildup and yeah. there's that chase. There's a little bit of chase and it. And it we all got to be honest here that, you know, the, I, I think girls like to be chased a little bit, 
right? They, mm-hmm. And maybe chase is the wrong word, but they want to, they want the guy pursued to pursue and mm-hmm. they want to show that they really want to be with them. I would be more attracted to a woman if there was a little bit of that, because I think for most men, it steps up their game. And That's the true. second, you know, if it's just, wow, you know, you went out one night and had dinner and you slept together and all that, it's like, okay, well, there's I'm not literally saying nothing else to work for. <laughs> well, it's it, right. I mean, it, there's just, you left, leave a lot on the table and, and that's a fun period. You know, you and I probably dated and we've been with, you know, even with guys, I've been with gals. Like when you have that first time where you met somebody, you talk on the phone and then you, you go on a couple of dates and you, all that builds up. It's just great. It's that desire that we talked about mm-hmm. that makes that a little bit stronger. And I'm not saying you need to wait 30, 40 dates uh, or that may be, but maybe let it happen naturally. That's exciting. I think it's better too, because let's just say you don't hook up right away. And the right. more you learn about the person, you realize, you know, they've always fantasized about doing it at a, you know, I don't know, a country club. Now you've got that information so you can surprise them on the night that you guys both kind of decide it's going to happen. You guys right. can make it special because now you have information to work with to make that special. Absolutely. But again, you better be listening as a guy. You better you better have that, you know, the, the ear is perked up. I mean, even with not even just sleeping with somebody the first time. Mm-hmm. When you're asking all these questions, you know, to the gal on the first date, food, what does she like to do? You got to be taking those mental notes. Oh, you know, I really love country music. Oh, man, you know what? That's awesome. I'm going to take her to a country concert in like a couple of weeks. Don't even tell her about so it. Fun. Plan it. That's what it's all about. I that. think uh, surprises, keeping people guessing. I think that's so sexy. It is. It it keeps the relationship young. It keeps it healthy. It keeps it, you know, just young at heart. And whether you're dating the first six months or it's been, you know, 10 years, I think that's important to kind of keep that a little bit. Otherwise, it's just your kind of guys are going in circles. And look at, I mean, I'm sure you talk to a lot of successful people that have been married for, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 years you know, relationships take work, but that's part of it. And in keeping mm-hmm. that, keeping that fire going. Always you know? something fresh. So I'm yeah. I'm going to throw a wrench in that wheel now. Okay, go ahead. So you're, you're going out with this girl. Let's just say her name's Sarah to make it easy. You're okay. dating Sarah probably four dates in. You think she's great. You got to just hit it off. But then somehow you start talking to another girl. Not that you meant to, but just something happens. Maybe you're in a bookstore or something. You start talking to another girl Oh, well, here's my number. If you ever want to have coffee sometime, when is the time you have to put the brakes on and go, well, I'm kind of going out with someone like, are you literally going out with them or are you open until there's a certain point in the relationship? How do you know when to stop going out with someone else or accepting invitations? Yeah, that's a great question. And I, and I think a lot of people, I don't talk about it enough. I'm glad you brought that up. I, Again, it comes down to being honest and having open communication. Three or four dates in, it really depends. How did those three or four dates go? Was it just, ah, oh, we had coffee once, we had like a couple dinners, and maybe you are, you're not feeling it yet, and you're still trying to figure it out. I would be, I'd be open to taking that number and not and not to be the bad guy here, right? Because you never know if that's going to be the love of your life that you just met. You're not committed into a relationship. You're four dates in. Um, you're not going out on a, you're not going out on a date with them. I think exchanging a number, there's nothing wrong with that. Now, what Thank you do you for after, being honest, because some people would have no, lied. But, and but, but what you something. do after that, what you do after that, that's where it becomes the, the moral thing, right? Because if you're going to now try to go date that gal while you've invested in another gal, I think that's wrong because mm-hmm. I think it's important to, you spent this time with this girl, but yet you're not sure yet or maybe you aren't because let's be honest if you're four dates in you're like i love this girl i want to be with her or vice versa the gal feels the same way then you're not taking that number um because you know i think there's a little bit of that too as long as and if you guys have already talked and said hey you know what i want to be i don't know what the kids say these days exclusive or you know i'm not seeing anybody else or i'm not online anymore you know, okay, now you've had that conversation, then, okay, I think maybe that might be a problem because you've kind of oh, given that person your word. But if you're four dates in and I don't see a problem with taking that number, 
Now, acting on it, that would be the deciding factor. If you're going to act on that, I think that's wrong. Um, oh, really? Because I feel life's too short. Um, you never know. And let's say that gal that you met in that coffee shop, like I said, is going to be the mother of your, your children one day. And mm -hmm. if you never took that number, you find out the gal that you're dating four dates in, you know, has a husband that you didn't even know about. Oh, you know? that, <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's a problem. Extreme. That's extreme, right? But mm -hmm. hey, there's does not act like it hasn't happened out here, out there, <laughs> both both ways. Mm -hmm. That you would be sitting there going, like, why did I not get that number? Mm -hmm. But not act on it. Because let's say, okay, let's say, and here's the flip side of that. You take the number, you don't do anything with it, you continue, you know, you continue dating and things go great. Well, then you delete that number. There's no reason to have that number anymore. But once you start getting into it after the past couple of dates, at some point, you, you guys have to have that conversation, right? Hey, I'm not, mm -hmm. you want to be exclusive, boyfriend, girlfriend. I think, yeah, and I wouldn't be mad if a girl took a guy's number either because I don't own her. She doesn't own me. We've, we've had four dates. We're, we're getting to know each other. Now, what do you feel is the final thing that make it, other than obviously I love you or we're exclusive, is there a point that you know that is serious, but maybe you both didn't say the words yet? Is there a point there? Yeah, there, there's a point there. I think, I, I don't know if it's, you know, I love you. And, you know, that that's that's different for everybody. Some people can say I love you in the first five days. Some people can say I love you after six months. But I think at some point, you know, if you're going on four or five, six, seven days, it's been a month or two, that you guys have that open conversation. I would want to. I would bring it up. I, I would just say, hey, you know, I really like you. And you know, these wonderful feelings for you. And I'm really happy. You know, you get, you got to have that open conversation with them. And I like that. To be honest, be, and to be honest, be honest. Hey, I'm, not, I'm not dating anybody else. I haven't been dating anybody else. And I'm not asking. And, and, and here's the other thing. You got to be careful saying that with somebody, right? You don't want to be, you don't want to put that other person in a position to be like, I'm telling you what to do. I'm not seeing anybody else. I'm, and I'm not telling you, you know, what to do. I just want to be open and honest with you. And this is me telling you not, not to do anything, but I really care about you a lot. And I really want to see where this goes. Cause I think it's, it's turning into a, a, like a beautiful relationship and I just want to be open and honest. And I don't want you to, you know, have any, you know, thoughts of, of, of that. And if you are, I want you to feel at ease that there is nobody else. And all I, all I'm focused in on is you. And I think it's important to have that. And now, now you see what kind of response you get, because now you put the ball in that other person's court. And you have to say it to their face. You can't do it on the phone because you have to gauge someone's behavior, don't you think? Like you have to see their body language and their eyes and everything, right? Yes. And I think another part of this too, and maybe we save this for another show, is the online thing. People, what do people do when they get into a relationship? They go on Facebook or Instagram. Oh, Aaron and Victoria just started dating or... or That's so inappropriate. Know, or, you know, but then again, maybe somebody post a picture of you and, and, and a gal or guy. And then, cause they want to not say anything to anybody, but that kind of like unofficially officially be like, wow, they're dating someone. Did you see that Victoria posted a picture with this guy the other day and they were holding each other. That's kind of like the way of like, I know a lot of friends of mine who've done that and they post that picture. And then what do you get the next day? Text and calls. Oh my goodness. I saw you with this girl. Uh... You know, there's that there. I, I think that's how people, do it these days i i see it. oh I oh i i think i was looking at it wrong so what you're saying is instead of using words you just put pictures is that what you're saying i think some people do oh, i think some people I do see. that it's kind of like a i'm not saying you're not going to have that conversation but i think you know if i was dating somebody for two months and then the next thing you know we become you know instagram friends or whatever you know social platform and i see a picture of her and i or shows a picture of us like kissing or holding hands. Well, she's telling her friends and everybody else, all hundreds of people are her friends that, Hey, she's seeing someone or she cares about that person enough to do that. So to me, I'm thinking, wow, that's serious. Now, maybe you haven't had that conversation yet, but I, I don't think absolutely not. Unless that person agrees that is yeah. absolutely inappropriate to me. I, it would yeah. have to be Aaron. Do you mind? I want to show, I want to put this on Facebook. Is it okay? But, but that's great that you bring that up, Victoria, because that's a great segue into that into to that conversation. 
Mm -hmm. Because if the guy goes, Hey, I'm not really comfortable with that. I think you're pretty getting a pretty good vibe that maybe he's not ready for like that commitment and vice versa. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. I think that's, definitely I just don't think you do. now again, I'm old school, like you old fashioned. I feel like we're dating, I don't know, three months. I think a six month is a good number. I feel like anything sooner sometimes, again, it all depends on the situation, but Anything yeah. could go wrong. So it looks awkward to go, oh, Victoria and Aaron together. And then two weeks later, I delete your pictures. <laughs> and then and then I put them back up. Have you seen those people? Uh, they're together, then they're not. Then they're together, and then they're not. And I think, oh, yeah. why don't you just like wait until you figure out what it is that's going on? Like, Gosh, I think yeah. it's strange. Because you put your friends through emotional. They don't understand that. Because now your friends are happy for you. Oh, wait. Oh, he's a jerk. Oh, she's she's rude. Oh, she and then all of a sudden you're going, Oh, I'm happy for you. So your friends are going on this roller coaster of emotions because you are going off and on, off and on, off and on. Right. It definitely it, and again, that segues into some other conversations I can't wait to have with you. But absolutely, I mean, you know, it's the it's the whole online persona of like what you're putting out there and other people see. What and... do you feel about that? Ooh, ask me a question about that. Ask me more of a direct question because there's so many things I could talk about that. Okay, I'm sorry. We're going out for two weeks. Yes. We go to dinner. It's a great dinner. I take a picture of both of us and then I just put it on Facebook. Oh, no, I wouldn't be okay with that. <laughs> because I think it's, it, I mean, <laughs> you know what it is? It's, it's not as much as about, I don't, when you're dating somebody, like especially after the first two weeks, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that you guys have each other's undivided attention. You don't have other people on the outside that are affecting that, you know, mm -hmm. and you don't want that pressure from your girlfriends or your guy friends. You want to keep it between you two and really get to know each other without outside, you know, opinions influences. and yeah. influences. And I think that's really important. Um, you know, if I'm dating somebody that I really care about, I'm not going to say anything. I, I'm going to really kind of keep that to myself for a little bit. And good. Okay, good. when I bring that up to some of my buddies, like, Hey, I've been dating this gal and she's amazing. And cause they're going to ask, you know, my guys are going to say, like, when did you meet her last night? I'm like, no, I've been dating her for four months or three months. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they're gonna be like, Whoa, I'm like, yeah. Cause you don't want, you want to really have an unbiased opinion of them a little bit. And exactly. then, but then that that's something really important about that is that now I want, my friend's opinion, right? Because I've already built how I really feel about this person. Now I want mm -hmm. to understand because I think it's really important that your close friends and your close family, you know, support you because that's I agree. You. I agree. And if they're not supporting you, then there's really something wrong with those friendships or family, or there's something wrong with you because your family loves you so much. Like, don't do this because of this, 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 you know, this is who this person really is. But it's really important to have that. And because you want those people are going to be in your life and you want to be around your girlfriend or your boyfriend with your close friends and family. And that's so true. And that segues into another. I'm I'm making it tough for you today. I'm sorry, but I'm that's okay. I'm just, I love it. So you're dating Sarah three months. Everything's going great. And then hey, I want to introduce you to my uh, three best friends. One of your best friends say, Hey, dude, I want to talk to you. You go off and you talk to him. Hey, I know she used to be with whatever. Just something bad about her that that friend mm -hmm. knows. What do you do? You know, I, I, it depends on what that is, right? Obviously, it comes mm -hmm. down to what he just told you. But if it's your good friend, he's obviously telling you for a reason. Mm -hmm. And at some point, depending on what he said, you know, like, you're going to maybe want to have that conversation, you know? like Oh, really so you'd bring it up to her? It depends what it is. It really uh, depends what it is. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the guys, you guys are, hey, you know, Sarah, she is crazy. My friend went out with her, you know, and this has happened, this happened. And then I'm like, okay, well, who's your friend? You know, I'm going to do a little homework before I just, you know, judge oh, yeah, somebody. Yeah, yeah. What if she's know. on OnlyFans? Yeah, well, there you go. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've heard some sore, horrible stories. And it could happen. Problem. What would you do? Ah, uh, you know, uh, that's, I love putting well, you on the spot. It's okay. Because 
I just started kind of like people have been talking about it and I'm not on only fans, but I, I see what it is. And I'd be a little nervous about that. I'll be honest. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously I think more females are on there than males. I think, if it, I think that's a statistical thing. Um, and it's a way for them to make money, but I don't know if I'd be comfortable dating someone that would be on OnlyFans while we're dating. Now, what if she said it's just a job? I just make good money. It's just my body. Again, you could do anything on Only. I, I'm not an uh, expert of OnlyFans, but I right, do know right. you could do like cooking Look, shows or I, something. It doesn't full, have to be sexual. Yeah. Full disclaimer: I, you know, people. Everyone has a past. Everyone has their life, yeah. and I don't judge anybody out there that's right. the like that. Even if they're on OnlyFans. Mm -hmm. I think that maybe once I'm engaged in a relationship with them and them with me, that there are certain maybe boundaries or, or you know, that, hey, look, I think it's this is an app where you can, you know, guys are paying money to see provocative photos of you and have conversations with you. That's not going to happen. That's not going to work for me. And I don't okay. think it's going to work for most men unless they kind of have, you know, some kind of darkness darkness to them you're like yeah this is really cool i didn't that's not going to lead to a successful relationship let's be honest about that so i don't know saying, any guy that would put up with that i absolutely exactly. don't know so i'm not saying just because you're on only fans or even if you're a dancer it doesn't whatever you do i don't i'm mm -hmm. not i wouldn't judge anybody but you and that person have to have those conversations to make sure that you're comfortable it goes all the way down to yeah true hey you know um, I'm not dating anybody else anymore. So if somebody comes up to me, I'm not going to, you know, it's all, it, you have to be open. You have to have those conversations. Um, mm -hmm. and so but you're, you're saying that's a, a no naked wise and all that stuff's a no for only fans for you. <clears throat> Again, you're not judging anyone. You're just saying for your lifestyle and for your personal business, you're not going to do that. I would be a little hesitant going forward with that. I mean, I'm not saying no, I would never say never. In the sense that, let's say this Sarah gal was on OnlyFans. I didn't know about it, mm -hmm. but now I do. Or she's open with me about it. Flip it. She says, oh, hey, I'm letting mm -hmm. you know I'm on OnlyFans. And I'm like, okay. You know, then there would be like a whole other conversation of like, you know, what's the purpose and all that? You know, are you going to be okay with that? And I would probably be honest with me like, you know, I knowing okay. you, I don't think that'll work for you. I would be okay. I, just I, I would tell her I would not be okay with it if we were in a relationship. If you and I are friends and we're cool, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm okay with that. That has nothing to do with that. We could be friends, but I'm going to be open and say, if we're going to be in a relationship, no, I, I'm not going to be comfortable with that. It doesn't mean yeah, that. I can't, I can't picture you that yeah, way. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Now, maybe some guys are, but it doesn't mean that I think they're a bad person or anything else. They may be no, a cool person. They may be cool to hang out with and maybe we become friends, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to continue a relationship with them because I'm not going to have that extra stress or anxiety of knowing that all that. And your going friends by. already saw her. That'd be so yeah. awkward, dude. That'd yeah, be awkward. That's, that's a little weird. And I think most people would feel that that same way too. Well, I'm going to give you another hard one. <laughs> this sure. is great. Hearing it yeah. from a guy's perspective. So you're dating Sarah. It's been three, four months. Everything's great. She's exactly what you like. She treats you well. And then she says, I need to talk to you tonight. And you're like, okay, um, let's go somewhere. And you, she picks your favorite place to keep it calm and relaxed. Okay. And she says, I should have been honest with you, but I'm married. And I'm busy because I know a scenario like this. Ooh. And you're in love with her. It's clear that you both love each other. What do you do? I, I would, just put you on the spot. <laughs> no, no. I, I look. I I would be honest and be like, hey, I really care about you. Um, but I can't continue engaging in this. You need to figure out. You need to. You need to. I have to respect your husband. You have to. You know, if you guys end up getting divorced down the road, and I'm still single. You know, I'd love to have a conversation with you. You know, I'd love to sync back up because that just has a recipe for disaster to, 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 to try to make that work or try to, even if she was to be like, look, you know, we're, we're going to get a divorce. It's going to happen. You know, I promise it just, that's not going to work because you want their undivided attention mm -hmm. and it's, you got to be respectful to, to the other person on that. And I'm not about that. And now maybe would you, you guys be able do... to walk away that night, the night she tell or day, whatever time. If she told you that, would you have to just cut it right there in your mind? I would, 
I would, I would have to cut it right there in my mind. I, I think out of, because now you know that, and now you're just as guilty, you know, because I'm assuming she's not telling her husband right. that you're doing that. And I'm not going to go rat on her or go call her husband and say, this is what happened mm -hmm. because I'm just going to allow her to make those decisions in life. And if she really cares about me that down the road, when things are fully, you know, divorced and she's moved on, then if she still wants to engage in that relationship, I would be open to that. But would you be nervous moment, though? Uh, it, it depends on, it, it depends on the marriage Were they married for six months, two years, or they married for like 20 years. It really depends on the situation because mm -hmm. you don't know, maybe she was absolutely miserable in an abusive relationship with the husband. You know, there's so many different dynamics to, to that. I'm not going to judge that person. Like I said, everyone mm -hmm. has a past, so I'm not going to, judge her based on that because if let's say you really i really like her and i really care about her and we hit it off i would be open to that once she's fully separated and divorced from her husband and to know that it, that it's over because now it even means more because she took that responsibility of doing all that and and taking that time versus just being like well you know screw it i'm gonna go on to the next guy that doesn't care because mm. you know i'm not gonna leave my husband yeah, there's a red there's there's some red flags there for sure, but I think it depends on again the the quote unquote the Sarah gal that I'm you know hanging out with. What relationship was she? You know, what kind of marriage was it? Because so there's absolutely no chance you would stay if she's married. No. Even if she's going through a divorce, you're not staying until it's over. No, I I just because here's the other part of this too. Let's say I want to be the nice guy and like oh, okay, we're not going to date, but I'll be your friend. Now you're basically kind of that crutch and to catch her and she's relying on you because she couldn't do that without you. You know what I mean? Oh, um, right. And now you become kind of the rebound or just the guy that got her through this. And now oh. she's free. Now she's free. And now she can go do maybe that to you. So there'd have to be a good gap of time in between her going to that divorce and then coming back into the picture, because then I would have, you know, she needs to find herself a little bit too. I and mean, that's a tough thing to go through a divorce. Sure. And I think that would mean more to me. So no, I'm not going to stay in that picture because it's, it's, it's a lose, lose. I um, agree with you a hundred percent for the guy, because you're always going to be sitting there thinking like, well, would she have really left him if I didn't sleep, you know, if I didn't, you know, if I stuck around, um, if I didn't, but don't around. you think from, from the get go, I'd be worried about her. And again, this could go either way. I, I'm just doing it because you're the guy I'm talking to. Sure. But wouldn't you be a, ner a little nervous? You've been with her four months and she never brought it up. Wouldn't you feel like there was a little bit of dishonesty there that yeah, I, I mean, that, but, I would but be that, worried? Yeah, I mean, that, I, I I would be, you know, that and that would obviously cause me to obviously end that. Yeah, I wouldn't go any further with it. I would want to know, like, you, I think you asked me, you know, after four months, would I be a little nervous about her waiting that long, right? Mm -hmm. And I think I would want to know why. I'd want to know a little bit more about her relate her marriage. And before I end it, because I would end it that night, I would be open with her and just say, hey, look, you know, maybe she's telling me, like, you know, she's, again... We don't know. I don't know the backstory of it. it was an abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. She just needed to get away. She wanted to maybe see what else is out there. There's no reason for me to be upset at her or mad, but I would end it in the sense that it's the best thing for her because, you know, if she was an abusive relationship, I would obviously help her get the help, you know, to get out of that mm -hmm. for resources. But at the same time, the relationship would end until she's moved on from that. And she needs to do that for her friends and her family support to get her out of that. Not me, some guy that she just needs to be with somebody else. Cause I don't want to be that next vine that she swings to. And just because I'm there, I'll always feel that, well, I was just that kind of crutch or that next vine for her to grab onto, to get out of this relationship. So that's why it's really important to, to walk away from that completely. And, and it might it, hurt, but you have to do, it's almost do. like the fruits of the poisonous tree. You know, that saying. Yeah. And that's tough. It's tough. It won't be an easy thing because mm -hmm. I'm sure you guys are both care about each other and you want to make it work, but I couldn't so do it. So now we're going to go in a while. Are you shy? Because I'm going to ask you. <laughs> I'm going to ah, ask you something. over there. What? I hear you laughing. <laughs> okay. So you've had a great week named the city. 
and there's uh you decide to go to a bar that's a little bit of a um music and that kind of thing okay. you're sitting at the counter just relaxing and two hot girls walk up <laughs> you already know where this is going i know where this is going <laughs> And they're they're absolutely cool. What would happen? Well, I don't know. I mean, they asked, define, "Would you dance?" Cool oh, I'll, I'll start off slow. Would you up, dance Victoria. with them? Hmm? Of course, of course. Okay. Two, two, two nice gals, and they just want to they want to hang out and then mm -hmm. have drinks and dance. Absolutely, why not? That's okay. And then I know it's coming. <laughs> oh, did I lose you? <laughs> <laughs> are you laughing over there so they're like hey we're staying here you want to go have a couple of drinks in our hotel room huh. <laughs> now and they're remember, not hookers <laughs> now you remember earlier there, there's two versions here there's the young version of a guy me well I'll just i'll put myself on blast and there's a there's the older me version right mm -hmm. so the younger me, yep, absolutely. I'm going up to have those drinks. <laughs> the naive, young, just, oh, man, this is going to be a great night. And you're single and you're just living life. Hey, more power to you. The older me, I'd be a little more timid. Um, just because I'm like, gosh, am I going to get robbed up there? Or, <laughs> you know, what's going to happen to me? I'm starting to think a little bit more. of like, I made it this long. I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> you know? That's funny saying, that you I, thought now, of robbing. Now, You're on. right. Now the young me would be in my head being like, you better go up there. Mm -hmm. And but at the same time, I think I'm pushing back a little bit because I'd be a little timid on that That's to just funny. be like, let's go, because I don't know what's behind those doors. Um and you just That's you so think, funny. But you think that, about it, right? I think as you get older, there's consequences. There's consequences, right? And the the younger version be like ah f it let's go uh, mm -hmm. i'm gonna have a blast tonight it's gonna be a great story i'm gonna tell my buddies as you get older you start to like oh god did i am I, are they gonna roofie me you know <laughs> are they gonna put somebody in my drink are they gonna steal my wallet you know who knows your brain starts being a little bit more uh mature <laughs> and they start you know rationalizing those things that's funny because i saw a thing on fate or i'm sorry instagram the guy says remember when you're young you'd go meet people in the woods and have drink on tailgating and yeah. and he says how many times we should have been murdered <laughs> 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 and the ridiculous things people would do young you jump in a car with people you didn't even know and go to the beach and oh, so yeah i absolutely. think when you're young it's a naive uh lifestyle that you don't realize the consequences as you get yep. older the consequences are blaring because now you're wondering why do these two girls you're a good looking guy two girls could pretty girls could go up to you so that's not unusual but i'm always leery of someone <laughs> Well, I mean, again, I bet if you polled that, if you did a poll with men mm -hmm. and you asked what their age was <laughs> and that same question, you would probably see a little bit of a different variety from the younger to the little bit older. So, <laughs> Darn it. I thought I was going to have a good uh, comeback with that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, last to question I'm going to ask you about being a gentleman and dating, and then yes. uh, we'll wrap it up, is you're at a house. You're at your girlfriend's house again, Sarah. You've been with her six months now, so it's pretty yeah. serious. And her sister lives out of town, and she says, "Oh, you're going to meet my sister tonight. She she lives in Texas, so she comes in. You meet her. She's really pretty, just like your girlfriend, Sarah. And then Sarah goes to do something out of the room. Sister starts coming on to you. What do you do? Oh boy. Oh boy." And this happens all the time. So it could be a friend or a sister. Well, I'm definitely not engaging with that. Um, <laughs> that's just a recipe for disaster. Um, and, um, you know, then what do you do after that, right? You can just be like, hey, you know, you can be respectful. I definitely would be respectful and be like, hey, look, um, I really like your sister. And, um, you know, I, no, no thanks. Sorry. I would tell her sister. I hundred percent would tell her not in oh, front would of her. You? Yeah, because now, now again, 
how do you know it's not a test? Exactly. Exactly. Right? And um and I wouldn't do it just because it would be a test, but you know, that has just a recipe for disaster because if you don't say anything and then the sister goes, Hey, you know, when you're in the kitchen or in the mm-hmm. bathroom, you know, he came on to me, you know, and whatever it may be. And then you don't say anything. And then all of a sudden now you're trying to backpedal and be like, well, I want to say something, but I didn't want to embarrass your sister. Mm-hmm. I think in that case, you got to be completely honest and just say, Hey, we need to talk about something later tonight when you get a chance, at least smart say that. man. And <laughs> you don't need to front her out. She's always going to know that something's bothering you. Um, this way, if you decide to go to the bathroom and your sister, the sister tries to go, Hey, he just tried to come on to me. He's like, well, Aaron needed to tell me something. So I'm going to go talk to him. And I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. she, this mm-hmm. is what, this is what happened. I mean, you never know. I mean, you don't know if it's crazy sister who's jealous or whatever's going on or it's a test Yeah. or maybe she goes, you passed, you passed the <laughs> test. Well, it happens all the time, especially mostly with friends more than sisters. Yes. But girls will be attracted, literally attracted to you, and they'll want your attention. I don't know how they feel that's going to end, but if you don't tell that that sister or your girlfriend, I think it's just a disastrous, like you said, situation, because it sounds like you're hiding something, or you might be thinking, hey, maybe later I can get some of this when she's not around. She can let her mind run away with her if you don't tell her. Absolutely. Yeah. You got to be up forward and front with that pretty quick and get in front of it because, you know, that's just, it's a, especially if it wasn't a test, you need to kind of tell them and, you know, and you got to be very gentle about that because it's her sister. And, um, what about friend? Do, you, do you have to be gentle if it's a friend or would you say something like, I don't trust your friend, Linda. She's, I mean, oh. I would probably say, <laughs> yeah, just, I would say be gentle, but maybe not as gentle as family because family's mm-hmm. family, but right. you know, some people's friends are family. So I would just be like, Hey, look, I, this is what happened. I don't, this has got to, you know, I, I, we need to talk about it and I don't want to come in between you and your sister. Um, but she oh, kind of came so over bad. and she just sat on my lap and I was like, I'm yeah, hey sorry. Like, I really like your sister and, you know, like I'm, I'm not okay with that. And I, I'm sure you're a really nice person, but, um, I, I'm, I really, you know, I'm with your sister right now. That's not okay. Um, and be very, very, you know, stern Diplomatic with that. Diplomatic about it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, but, but you gotta be careful because, you know, maybe, you know, who knows, like you said earlier, maybe she's just jealous or there's some other things going on in her life. And like, Hey, maybe your sister's going through a tough time. I don't want to come in between you and your sister because that could end your relationship. Well, honestly, that could end. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because now, or even worse, it ends the relationship between her and her sister um, or a rift between that because of that, or who knows. And blood is thicker than water. So she could also turn on you and go, are you sure? You weren't trying to come on her, yeah. Because her sister like, could play you innocent say to her? What all did you day. Say to her? You know, what, like, were you looking at her? Or, you mm-hmm. never know. So, but I mean, hopefully, you're not in that position, and hopefully, you know, maybe she knows her sister and be like, you know what? Not the first time she's done that. I'll be True. right back. Yeah, you know? and beat some so, ass. <laughs> yeah. So. That's true. Okay, so last last question is: you turn that tables. I doubt you have friends like this, but let's just throw out a friend. Sure. And then your girlfriend says, hey, Aaron, um, your friend Josh just tried to come on to me or told me he wants to get my number. What would you do? There would be some words and some <laughs> uh, tables moved. Some Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. I mean, let's be honest. If, if it's... Um... I'll be honest. I, I, I'm not going to mention the person's name, but there is a guy that I know. We're not really friends anymore. I had done that a couple of times with a gal or two when I was younger that I dated. Like it, maybe my relationship was, we were still dating, but he would invite her to go do stuff socially with some other friends, but it was a little, it was wrong. And what? Uh, I was pissed off and uh, it's obviously our friendship was completely severed. We That's passed so by each other from time to time, but you don't do that. And they're not your friend if they're doing that. So. I heard it's stronger with men too. For Again, women and men are different men. That's an absolutely no. That's a no, no. You don't, you don't do that. That's disrespect men, you know, are very much about loyalty and, 
and you do that, you don't get that, that you never get that loyalty back. You never get that trust from a guy. You don't? Nope. I never get that back. Wow. Because it's, you know, that can happen. I've heard, again, I've heard people talk before and that same thing happening. And I just feel like it's just such a line you cross that can never be fixed. Yeah. I, I just, how do you, especially if, I mean, if you're with some gal, you know, like how, how do you cross that line knowing that, you know, mm -hmm. it's one thing if, you know, you guys are all hanging out one night. He doesn't know that you're bringing the, you know, some girls out there with you guys, or she thinks she's a friend. If he doesn't know, then okay, there's some room for error there. So, you know, guys but, know though, don't they? But they like, know. But at the same time, how does a girl respond? You know, a girl, I think girls are more forgiving in a weird way than men. Yeah. Like with men, every guy I know would say that's an absolute no. He's fired, period no friends yeah. girls yeah. kind of make excuses like well maybe this happened or maybe he didn't understand or maybe she didn't understand so i think it's more likely a girl could make up an excuse why it happened than a guy yeah that's that that's a no in my book just uh you know guys are a little more territorial um yeah. it's in their dna it's in their blood and they sh they know better and you do that you know that's just a disrespect a, right disrespect and um that that friendship's probably ending right there <laughs> I, you know what i love about you you're you're pretty cut and dry it's i don't think there's a lot of gray with you You either agree with something or you don't and i like that it's a it's a it means you're committed and that means you uh believe in something and that you believe strongly in something some people waver back and forth so you're not sure where they'd go but with right. you it's, it's pretty black and white I try to be. I mean, it's just you know, it's 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 not to say that I'm not open minded about certain things, but those kind of things. I mean, I I'm fortunate. I've got some amazing guy friends that are like family, mm -hmm. you know. And not, you know, I could leave them with any like gal that I was with. I would never blink for a second, right? Mm -hmm. But um, you know, that's you have. Oh, th this ex you just made me think. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, that's this okay. extends a little bit more. So you're with Sarah six months, and then your friend. Uh... Pete and you guys are out camping or somewhere that's out mm -hmm. and then she comes on to him in secret how do you handle that well clearly it's over uh <laughs> and hopefully hopefully <laughs> my guy friend tells me that happened mm -hmm. and that's it i mean i'm that that's done there's no coming back from that really no, no i mean no i mean it's it i i don't think anyone could feel comfortable getting over the fact that not only do they you know, try to hook up with somebody else, but your friend, I mean, it's just got oh. all kinds of disrespect. And then you're worried about like, you know, hopefully your guide friends being like, Hey dude, she just tried to come on to me. And that one sucks, you know, but then there's, the, then you, that just solidifies the loyalty of how good of a friend that you have and be like, Hey, I stopped her, man. She, this is what she did. Stopped no matter what, because you don't know how the flip side of that's going to go with the Sarah gal who mm -hmm. might say he came on to me. And I'm going to tell you honest, I'm going to take my, my, my buddy's word, like, especially if we've been friends for years and I, I, mm -hmm. I, you know, um, I don't, you know, and of course, well, I was drunk or That's this. absolutely not an excuse. I'm sorry. sorry. You know, it's not an excuse because if you know, you know how you are when you drink or if you get drunk, then you shouldn't put yourself in any of those situations. And then on top of that, I don't know if I want to be with somebody that, loses control so much that they don't even know that they're doing something like that. That's and now you always have to worry about that. Um, and if they're using it as an excuse, that's just a very immature answer. And I feel like you as a man, again, girls are different by doing yeah. that because you could never save your face in front of your friend. If you stay with her. No. Like if you're with her, your friend's always going to look at you and go, you're with a hoe. Like I feel like you could never down live that down. It's tainted. It, it, it's um. There's no kind of coming back from that on that one. Um, wow. So you'd walk away. I'd walk away. Wow. Yep. yep. No excuses. She couldn't. No. Like you said, as she says, she's drunk. That's just then you shouldn't have been drunk. It's pretty much what you're saying. You know, it, like I said, it. We we've talked a little bit about this today about kind of the generation gap and the age difference, right? You know, when mm -hmm. guys and gals are younger and you're in your twenties and you're partying and you know, friends are all together and that's, you know, doing all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think there's that more opportunity for that. And I think, you know, younger, younger adults are, are more exposed to that because mm -hmm. of just 
maybe the heavy drinking and the partying and the going to camping and doing all that stuff, which leads to that, those kind of things. Um, but you know, that's a girl you're dating should be more mature than that. You gotta be much more mature than that. And if they're not there yet, again, maybe they need to do some growing up, you know, they got to grow up a little bit. They got to move past that. And it's a, you know, period in their life. That doesn't make them this absolute terrible person. Everyone makes mistakes. Everyone does those things, right? It doesn't make it okay because nobody's perfect. You and I both made mistakes. You know, we've all, everyone has, mm -hmm. but you got to get over that kind of period because, you know, look at, let's say you're, it's your first time out drinking like that. And you've never like got that drunk before, you know, I'm being devil's advocate and that mm -hmm. happened. Okay. But now, you know, right now, now, you know, that the, the gal is out there and she's drinking and she knows that she can't handle that, that maybe she shouldn't be doing that, that because right. she don't want to be all of a sudden losing control like that. See, trust yeah. is big with me, Huge. trust loyal. And when no one's watching how, how you act. And so to yeah. me, even though I'm a female and and you're a male, I could never forgive her because I could not trust her. Like even in the back of my mind, I'd always have a little bit of mistrust, even though she made a mistake. Again, like you said, you're not trying to judge anyone, but you don't well, want to be in a relationship that you have a little bit of doubt all the time. What if I go out of town and then, you know, that guy's Pete's at my house and he has to go to my house to fix something and she's there. Yeah, it's a, the, that's gone. It's out the door. But you know, you they got to grow up and they got to figure out, you know, your boundaries and your personal boundaries about what you're capable of. And like, I'm a, I'm a big sense of guys too. Like you lose control like that. And we all know, like we all have friends that, you know, some people drink and they're very, very funny. Or you have some people that drink that get into bar fights and you have some people that drink and just True. make crazy decisions, you know, you got to understand your limitations, your own self, when those things happen and those can affect relationships, you know, and that's kind of what, you know, you and I've been talking about that, um, that could destroy lifelong relationships, well, then especially, as, as, especially as you're older. Now, last question about that is when that happens with a group of people and like you said, and then your friends find out she does something like that, mm -hmm. would your friends be the type that says, Hey, forget about it. Would they just forget about it? Or would it be something you're, you'll always have them say, remember that girl you dated that was trying to sleep with us? Do you, what kind of friends do you have? Well, in the sense that, that like, situation came up. It like, like if I had like, let's say friends today that they were in that situation with me when we were younger, like they were the ones involved in it. No, if they were, let's just say uh, the Sarah comes on to Pete, you mm -hmm. guys are all camping now. So it's right now. Sure. This time. Okay. Right now. Will they always remind you or are they good guys and they just say, you know what, forget about it. She's she's out. We don't need to worry about her. Or would they always say, dude, remember the girl you went out with that was trying to sleep with us or or with Pete? They they'd be they'd be good. I mean, my friends these days would be out. I mean, they would be like they would be honest with me and, and open and be like, Nope, this is not the type of person that you want to be hanging out with. They're gonna mm -hmm. be honest. You oh, know, good. like hey, they're not gonna they're not gonna not tell me. Um you know, they're going to be, they're going to be honest because I'm going to do the same for them. You know, that's not, that's, you that's have not, to. you have yeah. to, it, it, you can never come back. Plus, I want to know, like, I would want to know, right. You would want to know yeah, that if that was happening that, Hey man, I'm just going to let you know that this happened because if you don't say anything to them and you're like, wow, geez, I want to like save the relationship and like not say anything. Well, now you got to live with that burden of knowing, or, you know, that, Hey, he doesn't know the full truth about it. I'd want to know. I want to know. That seems that so doing. embarrassing. It just seems horrible. Yeah. To, to have have people know that, and and it's almost like you're in the room and everyone knows but you. That's terrible. That's got to be the worst. Absolutely. Don't you think. Absolutely. Now, if you're dating, last question about because I'm I love hearing your answers. <laughs> so you're with Sarah. Good questions. The first few months, so you haven't gotten to six months yet. Would you say something like that and go? Because sometimes people will sit down and you're having a nice conversation and then they'll say, what do you hate or what do you dislike? Would you just be honest right there? I would have a problem if someone talked to my friends or fill in the blanks. Would you ever just tell her that from the start before something even happened? No, I don't think so. Um, I mean, okay. if I have to have that conversation with somebody and tell them that, that I, I feel like that would be... I don't think that, I don't think I would have to have that. I don't, I, I mm. because why would I need to do that? I mean, maybe if that happened to me before or that happened, you know, once oh, before, maybe, 
you know, maybe we're just having a, a deep conversation one night. Maybe they were like, oh, what would you do if this happened? Like you and I are talking right now. Mm -hmm. um, but that wouldn't be on the top of my list to, to put them in a position to be like, you know, if, Hey, if this happened, what would you do? Um, oh, that's true. And you want to know the truth though. Cause honestly, if you bring it up, they'll know not to do it. And then you wouldn't really know the truth then. Yeah. I mean, I would hope that me getting to know them as a person and obviously being around my friends and being around family and to see how everybody interacts, um, that that's important too. And you get to know how they are as a person, you mm -hmm. know, because, you know, if you, if you went out, let's say you go out with a gal and she's very, very touchy feely and she, you know, does, you know, very hugs guys or maybe kisses them on the cheeks or some guys, gals and guys kiss on the lips, you know, there's, there's all kinds of, yeah. Like, so, you know, you got to figure that out, but I'm not going to bring that up. I'm going to let kind of the relationship grow a little bit and see how that develops. I love that. You are the best man to talk with. Because I love your honesty and stuff. We have to keep this going. We're going to definitely keep it going because you asked some amazing questions. And I think a lot of people want to hear from two different perspectives from a guy and a gal. And the truth. Not be sugar. I like that you don't sugarcoat it. Nope. You've been listening to Victoria and Aaron at the Lounge here on VNSNRadio.com. Stay tuned for more.